Imagine this, it's Friday night, you have popcorn, Netflix and chilling with your partner, watching a romantic movie, completely immersed in it, you're in the moment, and then... Do you wanna gain muscles? Do you wanna work out? Try Turbo G! A few moments later... You finally get back to the movie, and settle in to find out what happens next, and then... What the f***? It's safe to say that Netflix are in a bit of a pickle at the moment. Their stock crashed and their competitors such as Disney+, Plus, HBO Max and Apple TV are taking more market share by the day. And even though Netflix still leads the pack with more than 220 million subscribers, they lost 200,000 subscribers in the first quarter of 2022. So how is Netflix planning to fix that? Solution number one, implementing a strict password sharing policy. Netflix estimates that more than 100 million households have access to its service by sharing someone else's password. That's right, more than 100 million households. If you want to calculate how much revenue they're losing, it's around... Uh, it's a shit ton of money. So Netflix began testing different ways to curb password sharing. First in Chile, Costa Rica and Peru by charging extra fees on accounts that share passwords out of home. And it's not off to a great start. Restofworld.org spoke with more than a dozen Netflix subscribers in Peru who said the messaging around the policy change was confusing and they haven't been subject to any enforcement that charged them for sharing passwords. At the moment, there's no plans to roll this out globally. But what has been confirmed is solution number two, launching a cheaper ad-supported tier. Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarandos said we're adding an ad tier for folks who say, hey, I want a lower price and I'll watch ads. This is a customer segment that Netflix ignored for the past few years. Now, it might seem radical, but seeing ads on a video streaming platform is not something new. One example is HBO Max, who launched its own ad-supported tier last year in the United States. You'll see ads before and during select shows and movies, and when an ad break starts, you can see how many ads are in the ad break in the upper left corner. There's also a timer that counts down the end of the ad. You can expect to see about 4 minutes of ads per hour. Fast forward and skip options are not available when an ad is played. So it's literally like watching a TV commercial. Back to Square One, it seems. I expect Netflix to take a similar approach with their ad placement. Most users won't like this, but I will. At the end of the day, I'm a marketer. The first thought that crossed my mind when hearing the news was, cool, a new platform to reach my target audience. This new ad-supported tier could present a great opportunity for brands to promote their product. Because product placement on Netflix was already a great awareness channel. Remember Squid Game? The South Korean TV show was responsible for van sales increasing by 7,800% because characters on the show wore them. Right, Amy? We have all heard about the Netflix effect. It changed and drives culture. Chess saw a revival after The Queen's Gambit was released, with chess set sales increasing by 273%. So perhaps ads are a natural continuation of the influence of Netflix content effort. And as marketers, we will have more targeting options, especially when trying to reach individuals with specific personality traits. In a recent study, researchers aimed to better understand how gender and personality traits affect movie preference. In a nutshell, People who chose the comedy genre were more open. People who prefer horror movies are less agreeable and less extroverted. People who like action movies are more conscientious. People who are conscientious and neurotic seem to prefer romance movies. And people who like fantasy films tend to be more open, creative, adventurous, and less extroverted than those who prefer other genres. Now, the most important question of them all, is this the right move for Netflix? In my opinion, yes. Even though many Netflix users are not excited about this, this is the route most streaming platforms are taking. Disney Plus is already planning to release its own ad-supported tier, while HBO Max results showed that its ad-supported tier can produce strong results for the company. During the first quarter of 2022, HBO Max added 1.8 million total subscribers in the US alone, and so 117% increase in revenue compared to the first quarter of the last year. Ad sales definitely played a big role in this. So it makes sense for Netflix and Disney to follow suit. But we also have to remember, 200,000 users, they unsubscribe from the platform. So retention is also a big problem for Netflix and they need to solve it. Perhaps the price is not the sole reason why people are leaving. Maybe it's the content itself. Maybe ads are not enough and Netflix has more on its hands than it thinks. 
But if this new attitude drives revenue growth, you can bet that Netflix will invest more money to create more original content. So what does all of this mean for you in the short term? Not much. You'll still be able to get Netflix for free by using your best friend's password. And no ads will be popping up anytime soon to disrupt your Netflix and fill sessions. So enjoy it while you can. Make sure to binge those shows that you have been meaning to get round to as things may be different in the future. Let me know in the comments below if you're a fan of seeing ads on Netflix for a discounted sub or perhaps it could be part of your marketing strategy as a marketer because Netflix could be about to change forever. Thank <laughs> you.